Hello. <laughs> Hi, Luca. How are you? Very nice to meet you. It's a pleasure to meet you as well, Mr. Dill. All right. Well, uh, congratulations on <laughs> the award at FX Street. Uh, I don't see the trophy on your desk, but you <laughs> wanted for best sell side analysis, buddy. Congratulations to you. Well, I thank you so much. It was it was so amazing because I, I didn't expect you know FX. I, I didn't expect it was just a uh, wow. It, it made yeah. me want to drive. Yeah, it just made me want to. You wow. Know, yeah. You're a you're a humble guy, you know. Uh, for you know, uh, I once said, uh, "It's with great pride I'd like to announce how humble I've become." But you're with a very humble guy, and uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your analysis? In fact, why don't we start get in a time machine with me, Luckman? Okay, you're a, you're you still look like a pretty young guy. <laughs> it's hot. And, it's hot. Uh, uh, no gray hair. Uh, tell us about how your uh, trading journey began, how you got involved in the industry, uh, what that journey was like for you. It all started back in 2006, 2007, when I was still in my freshman years in university. I didn't know anything about Forex then, but I had a, I had a housemate who both studied the same subject, economics, but he didn't go to his lectures, nor go to any tests, but he was always happy. Uh, and he was always making money somehow, and I was asking, how do you do this? Then he brought me to his room, and he showed me a chart. I don't even remember the broker, and right in front of me, he made so much money in such a short period of time, and that really got my world spinning. And from that day on, I had to research everything about FX, what is foreign exchange, how can I get into foreign exchange, the technicals, the fundamentals, and... Moving on, this is where I am right now. So I was I self taught myself how to do technical analysis, but I didn't know anything about the fundamentals and I learned the hard way that they're both the same sides of the same coin. You need technicals and fundamentals to go hand in hand. So I wanted to be in a position where I can learn from professionals. That's how I ended up in a broker research analyst. Okay, uh, although being self taught and uh, I share that with you. Uh, I had influences. There were other technicians whose stuff I read and started to observe how um, powerful some of the things were that they were using. Did you have any uh, major influences technically? Oh, yeah, there was there was um, there was one um, Steve Lovey. Um, he was a there was one major one I had. He was a technician. I think Steve Lovey. Um, this guy has been a technical analyst for like 20, 30 years, candlestick formations. Oh, Steve Nissan. Nissan. Oh, Steve, Steve Nissan. Apologies. Yeah, Steve Nissan. Okay, so, okay, so you gravitated towards uh, candlestick trading through Nissan. Candlestick analysis, yeah. Interesting. Okay. And now you've learned that you have to marry the fundamentals with the technicals. Um, does that... Does that happen, uh, and does that, now that you say it's 50-50, you give them both 50-50 weight? For example, we have the NFP on Friday. Do you take positions in front of a red number like the NFP? So, so that's a very interesting question. Even though I understand fundamentals are important, I'm more of a person who likes to wait until after the release because I've understood the NFP no matter what the result is, the market is going to move in that direction for a week, a week and a half. So rather than trying to catch a falling life or play guessworks, you can wait for the release then. If it's a strong figure, we know that it's going to be dollar strength. So if dollar strength takes center stage for the week, I'll go into positions which I know the dollar was strength. Yeah, so prudence over valor, right? Prudence <laughs> over valor. You, you know, you know, uh, uh, Luckman, when people tell me, oh, I was long before the NFP and the euro went up 150 pips, you know what I say to them? Good guess. What you say? <laughs> <laughs> so, so tell us a little bit about your sell side analysis and uh, where you yeah. provide it and uh, how often you provide it on FX Street and where people could find it, etc. Yeah, so with the sell side analysis, we try to provide it at least twice a day. 
but we want to write reports on big moves rather than writing reports for the sake of writing reports. So if there's nothing happening in the afternoon, but there's something big in the morning, we'll probably see our analysis. So at minimum, we'll have our analysis five times a week. It's on the FX Boot section. Um, okay. Let me try to share my screen. And and what session do you mainly trade? And uh, geographically, where do you trade from? So I'm living in Cyprus now. I'm in the beautiful land of Cyprus. So we're two hours ahead from the UK. So okay. I like to catch the the London session breakout. Okay. Uh, has Cyprus recovered fully from the bail-in a few years ago? What's it life has, like? In, what's life like there in Cyprus, Lachlan? Life is very, very beautiful in Cyprus. I must say it's, um, it's relaxed. The people are very friendly. The weather is amazing. The food is top quality. It's almost okay. like a paradise. <laughs> oh, okay, well, God, then you're living the dream, right? Where did you move from? Where did you move from before you came to Cyprus? I moved from the United Kingdom, central London, okay. actually. I was, yeah, yeah. So this is completely different from the UK. In the UK, things would be fast, hot and bustle. Quite the opposite here. How are uh, how are housing expenses there in Cyprus? You, you could tell I'm doing an interview for myself. Now. <laughs> well, honestly. <laughs> Honestly, I think it's very, very good value. You know, it's um, the yeah. cost of living is not that much. You know, when you okay. and, uh, why don't we switch gears again? Uh, <clears throat> you know, a lot of people feel like they have to know what's going on in every pair. And I bring up the exam example, Luckman, that when I was on the floor of the CME, that I knew guys that stayed in one trading pit for 20 years, their whole career. And they knew one market like the back of their hand. You know, they may have been in cattle and never traded a gold contract or an S and P contract. Um, when I know you're an educator as well, so what do you advise people to do as far as uh, concentrating on how many pairs so that they can learn to master a few instead of being a jack of all trades? Yeah, yeah, that is a very good point you've put on, and from, from my experience, you know, when you're playing with the foreign exchange markets, it's so easy to look at the euro dollar, the pound yen, the pound Aussie, you know, there are hundreds and hundreds of pairs, but if you're new to the markets, I feel the best thing you can do is just look at the power fours, look at the euro dollar, the pound US dollar, Australian dollar, dollar yen, because in the end, believe it or not, they're all correlated. So play with the power fours when you're a little bit more comfortable and you understand the fundamentals of the other pairs, like if you understand what's happening in the United Kingdom or the fundamentals behind the fund behavior, then you could focus on a pound US dollar. Are you an early indicator of a Brexit? You left the UK as the UK. <laughs> <laughs> Is the UK going to leave the EU now that uh, Lockman Otunga has moved to Cyprus? Is that, is that an early market tell indication? <laughs> You know, you know the Brexit, the the Brexit debate is quite delicate and fragile. You know, it's it's a fifty-fifty, and ultimately, no matter what anybody says, I don't think anybody's gonna know what the result is because it's it's evenly split. I mean, from what I've seen in the city, a lot of city people are saying it would not make any sense for the UK to leave the Brexit simply because of the EU trade were quite intertwined and us leaving the EU would create so much uncertainties that had we stayed in the EU things would have been okay. It's, it's a very, very delicate topic and you have to be careful what you say and how you say it. We've seen what's happened on TV already. Yeah, well, yeah, I think it's delicate because you could talk about all the economic arrangements but what Trump said, and that's not a play on words but about Donald Trump, but what Trump said is what's happened in Paris and happened in Belgium and uh, the fear of terrorist attacks and not controlling borders in Europe. Has there been any spillover uh, in Cyprus with what happened in Belgium? Have you noticed any type of security being upgraded there? No, no. And uh, the reason why, from what I've seen, I don't think anything may happen in Cyprus simply because of what it is and where it's situated. You know, in Cyprus, migrants won't want to come to Cyprus because it doesn't lead to the route of coming to Europe. If you see where I'm coming from, Cyprus is quite yeah. a strategically placed land where you have no benefits 
come in here if you're an immigrant or if you want to do any attacks. It makes no it makes no sense. So no so no comes, immigrants, although they're uh, migrating from the Middle East to the Greek Isles and Cyprus being come, near Greek, you're not seeing any inflow of immigrants into the Cyprus. But the only one time I remember such happening was almost three and a half, four months ago when at least a hundred and fifteen came to Cyprus, but they came on an accident. They were trying to get to, they didn't want to come to Cyprus. Okay, so uh, let me ask you this for a little bit, uh, back to the markets, uh, do you consider yourself a position, swing, or day trader? I or think I'm of, a... Or, or all of these <laughs> <laughs> I'm a. I'm, I think I'm a more of a position trader. You know, I, tr I look at a monthly, weekly dailies. Uh, a saying guy said myself is the daily rarely lies. Anything you see in a daily time frame is more or less the truth. You know, there's not that much noise. So if okay. you see a strong bearish trend in a daily time frame, that trend is probably the real deal. So I trade on a daily when I can. You know. Okay. Well then, since you can I'm going to put you on the spot, Lockman, and ask you for uh, Nostra, Nostra Otunga, okay? <laughs> of Nostradamus and Lockman Otunga. Uh, when you look at your monthlies, your weeklies, and your dailies in the Euro USD, moving sideways in this range from 104 to basically 114, 115. What's your bias, and do you think uh, we're going to either come out of the upside of the range and be looking at a 120 plus handle in the euro, or are we going to finally take out the 104 low and see parity, or it could both happen and just one before the other? Can I, can I share my screen? Excuse me? May I share my screen? Oh, sure. You go to the uh, okay. upper left hand corner, you'll see a green box with an arrow. Perfect. There we go. Okay. okay. Beautiful. Yes. Right. Yeah. A picture Perfect. speaks a thousand words. So we're looking at a, to me, looks like a symmetrical triangle. You got it. You know, and okay. I can see potentially higher highs and higher lows being created on the euro dollar daily time frame. And what my bias is, if we can secure a strong daily close above the 1.12 level, this will actually potentially create a new lower high. So a new higher low, and with this new higher low being in place, I think we may have a breakout above 1.134. So I'm actually bullish on the euro dollar right now, and I think once we get a breakout above 1.134, the sky's the limit. The parity dream is in the past. Right. So you're looking at pretty much uh, a 1300 pip formation, and say for example we get the breakout of the triangle looks like 112 and a half or so. Uh, breaking that blue line above that green line and closing yes. above it. It looks like that would measure about uh, 126. You've got it. Is that viable when you go to your You've weekly or monthly? So. Okay, now we're on your weekly. So yeah, once we have that breakout above that, the next important level above 1.13, if possible, is 1.17. Right. 114. Yeah, and then you have that return line. If we would get back in the broken bullish channel, that would be a real powerful signal for you, wouldn't you? Because we've been trading outside of it. Uh, since we well. broke down, we had that one back test at 114 and came off. If we get back inside that channel, maybe we could go the return line above it, and that would take mm. us up there, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. Any well, other? It all depends on Friday. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, we've got NFP this Friday, so yeah. yeah. One thing I learned with NFP, the, the truth about NFP is. NFP actually has the potential to destroy the fundamentals, either you like it or not. You can have the best technical yeah. setup. If the NFP says no, the NFP yeah. says no. Yeah, you, yeah, basically you could throw your charts away for at least an hour on Friday, right? You've got it, you've got it. Um, um, another, go ahead. Yeah, uh, the dollar index I find quite interesting is because um, it's all this ruckus about 
interest interest rate hikes and interest rate rises in April, in June, and July. And I feel investors have been left bewildered because if you looked at the previous meeting the Fed had, they said that the possibility of two interest rate rises was on the table. But right. lately, if you looked at what Fed members have been saying, they've been saying that there's a possibility of an April US rate rise. I, I don't think this is possible. Although data... How about June? That, How about June? There's a 50% possibility in June. June is another picture. That's, that's a month for you know, April, May, June. Right. That's two, two and a half, three months away. But April, I feel that's a bit too close. So what I feel is, I feel this inflated expectations over the possibility of an April rate hike may wear off and the dollar should be left vulnerable. And the dollar yeah. should be left vulnerable. This looks, like a, fa- looks like a failing rally to me. Uh, Janet Yellen stopped in our community early this morning because she's going to be testifying in front of Congress, and she said, I hope that the NFP will give it some direction so that the is <laughs> much here so that we could talk about maybe raising rates in April and, and possibly do it in June in case we don't. And, but in June, if we don't want to, we don't have to, and we'll let you know. You ever heard, that's my Janet Yellen imitation. So, you sound perfectly uh, like her. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right. So, it looks like uh, the dollar, uh, the euro, a lot of things are lining up for the dollar to be under pressure at, or at least be softer for a while. Uh, am yes. I encapsulating your viewpoint? Yeah. Okay. So, how well, about U.S. dollar yen? Uh, do you think we could end up with a risk off move with the dollar weakening? Or, well, is it going to be su- or is it going to be supportive of risk assets because the weaker dollar will boost commodity prices? What's your take on that? See, see that's, a, that's a very nice question as well. But I, I feel that with the, with the dollar yen, dollar weakness should take center stage and the risk on, risk on. So risk off trading environment, risk aversion, which should boost our appetite for the dollar yen, for the yen, should actually send the dollar yen lower. So I'm actually bearish in the dollar yen in the bigger picture. There's so much going on globally, you know. There's so much going on globally. We've still got the lingering China woes in the background. We've still got Eurozone growth not looking too good. We've still got geopolitical tensions. Even though... uh, Gold. Even though gold has been slightly bearish, still feel the risk aversion that's still lingering around the global markets, plus potential dollar weakness, should be the right ingredients to send the dollar yen back to 112 and potentially lower. Well, what a great interview, Luckman. It, it's a pleasure meeting you, and now I understand how you won best sell side analysis because um, I really like I really like tacticians that look at longer term charts and especially since uh, you work for a broker right you're you're it's employed funny, by right? FXTM correct yeah yes yes okay and you and and you would think that uh, a broker FXTM would want you focusing on 15 minute uh, 30 minute charts <laughs> to generate trading volume and and you're out there providing the big picture to people cuz uh, I don't know about you I'm I've turned into a believer that less is more and that the hardest thing in this business is the waiting and the waiting for the setups and like Tom Petty says the waiting is the hardest part and uh, really a a great interview and congratulations to you and uh, I hope that you continue to go upward and onward and pips rain down on you and your uh, pupils that you teach and much prosperity yes. to you throughout the rest of the year, buddy. Thank you, sir. It's been a pleasure. You know, I, I hope to do this again. It's, it was so fun. It's always great dissecting the markets, looking at the bigger picture, looking at the pros and cons. You know, it'll be it'll be interesting what Friday has to offer. Do you ever uh, come in and watch other interviews that I do with? Uh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. When I can. Um, yeah. Okay. I'm really so you're aware, you're aware of uh, you know um, my efforts and my mission to build up and edify traders every day. Oh yes. Okay. Yes. And you know what? You've added to that today with your appearance today, and uh, 
I'm proud to call you my trading warrior brother, now living in, uh, living in paradise and living the dream. Congratulations to you again, Lachman. Nice meeting you, partner. Thank you very much. Good hunting. Perfect. <laughs> All right. Everyone, thank Luckman. Otonga, you could follow him. His Twitter handle is at L-U-K-M-A-N underline F-X-T-M. And follow his tweets. I'm going to follow you. I'm going to get your Twitter handle and follow you today so I can keep in touch with what you're doing, buddy. Okay? Great stuff. Okay. Thank All you right. very much. Okay. You're very welcome. You could just check out a Hangout anytime and go back to your yearly charts. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay. See you, buddy. I'll Let's see you. Take care. Bye. Everyone thank Luckman. So Luckman, uh, you may want to check out his analysis, and uh, he's kind of on the same page as we are. Some dollar softness, some bearishness in the end. You're all having a chance to surprise to the upside, and um, another great interview in Lauer, in my opinion. In my extremely accurate and humble opinion, if you enjoyed that interview, give me a why. There's mine. There's my one. So you're all extending I, I, this. Uh